How are we doing everyone? Sam here with Statman Day for the final video in our trilogy. The best trilogy since Back to the Future. I don't think there's more than three Back to the Future. Maybe there is. I don't know. Say anyway. Star Wars, there's only no. three of those, right? No. Oui. That's going to piss off a lot of people. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully not the people watching this. We're going to talk about formations because Man United, what formation is Jose Mourinho going to play next year? Traditionally, at most of his clubs, 4-2-3-1 is the formation he's loved. But last year, we saw 4-2-3-1, we saw 4-3-3, we saw 3-5-2 at home against Chelsea. We've seen 3-5-2 against LA Galaxy on the tour. Yeah. So we're going to run through these three potential formations and what would be best for Manchester United given the current squad and maybe if there's any signings you think that we need to make to make these formations work. So first up, we're going to talk about 4-2-3-1. As you can see here, just mocked up a formation. You know, obviously De Gea in goal, back yeah. four is going to stay pretty much the same in all formations. You've got Valencia, Lindelof, Bay, and Luke Shaw, who I think absolutely should be starting there. And in midfield, I've gone for Carrick and Herrera. On the wings, we've got Lingard and Martial. Pogba, not really as a number 10, but sort of as the most aggressive of that three, mm. just behind Lukaku or Rashford. Do you see... Mourinho getting his 4-2-3-1 back at Manchester United this season, do you think it actually suits us? I think it's, it's, a, you know, it's a combination. I think there'll be different situations and different formations. I think that's what Mourinho has always mm. done. Uh, we did especially last season. You mentioned all the formations. He played a 3-4-3 away at Sunderland and yeah. we won 2-0. It was a Jess Lingard wonder goal. But again, the 4-2-3-1 is a good system. Um, or potentially we could call it a 4-2-1-3 in a way. If you're thinking Pogba um, sort of sitting ahead of yeah, those yeah. DMs and yeah. then the, three, the front three great podcast ahead of, um, of that would work well I think the hole is Michael Carrick unfortunately yeah. I just don't think he's quick enough you know, going to the, the Swansea game at home was one of the indicators of many that mm. says he's a little bit too slow on the ball it's a little bit like Wayne Rooney where Wayne Rooney's game became flat under Louis van Gaal seems like Michael Carrick's game has become a little bit flat not to say that he's a bad player, I just think yeah. that he could up the tempo a little bit. And that's something that he needs to do this season to keep his position in the team is, is the tempo, is change the tempo. But, but you, you, think, you think looking at this formation, Man United need a new defensive midfielder for it to work? Midfielder, yeah, and I'd also say the brilliance of having a front three is you could play a number of different things. What I'd like to see, you know, if you want to play the three forwards that we've got, Martial, Rashford and Lukaku, mm. you could play that together. Because if you allow Pogba to roam to create, you've got that, you know, you've got those guys that can play mm. in that final third. Martial, who's played on the left-hand side, mostly for United, had his best season. Uh, playing on that left wing, love, you know, loves getting the ball to feet and going. Mm. I think that's quite a good combination if you want to use all three forwards. And that's what United could either do, is instead of using two, I like the is using the three. Um, but again... In and out, you've got the likes of uh, Juan Mata, we've not even spoke about having him as a number 10, Paul Pogba a bit deeper, mm. opens up variation against the weaker sides. Again, Mata on the right, Mkhitaryan. I think Mkhitaryan's going to be one of United's best players next I'm season. I'm looking forward to seeing so, how he gets on, absolutely. In this side, if you were to, if I were to name it tomorrow, I think it'd be a Lukaku, number, a Lukaku up front, Mkhitaryan on the right wing, and then either Rashford or Martial on that left. I think that Mkhitaryan has just shown back in the last season that he's starting to get adjusted to Manchester United. We've seen mm. him pre-season. He's got a goal and assist in one of the games and a goal and assist in another game. Mm. So he's been brilliant driving through midfield. I think it, it's Mkhitaryan's year and I love the fact that people slammed him for that picture he's, of him looking a bit... That was funny. He did look pregnant though. I'll give him that. Yeah, but it doesn't matter if you're pregnant I know. if you're scoring goals. <laughs> but it, it, somehow Mkhitaryan seems faster running with the ball than without it, which I find really, really strange. But mm. I agree. Yeah. Hopefully Mkhitaryan's going to have an absolute barnstorming season. But... As sort of Dave ran through that, United have got options. In the, if you're looking at the 4 2 3, for those three, yeah. we are stacked with options already, and that's without yeah. someone like Perisic coming in. Correct. Uh, but obviously, this is one of the formations. The next one we're going to talk about is 4 3 3, which is pretty similar to 4 2 3, but has a slight variation on it. Variation, even, not a variation. Right, so next up is a 4 3 3. It's a, it's a formation which is quite similar to the 4 2 3 1, but you know, as Dave was explaining there off camera, it means that you've got one holding midfielder instead of two, obviously, <laughs> which means that you can actually press the opposition a little bit more. And United, I would say, are probably our best performances last year did come when we pressed, when we didn't have possession. We did it high up the pitch and we yeah. won the ball high up the pitch. So is this a formation you can see working for Man United next year? And maybe what sort of situations do you expect to see that in? I like the 4-3-3. I think it's a, it's a top formation. It, it obviously gives you that variation of being able to press. I mean, United didn't do enough. You know, they covered the fewest uh, kilometres per game in the Premier League, which shows their style. They were, you know, able to sit back and they were looking to counter that. But at the same time, at home, you want to dictate the tempo. Mm. You know, what we're seeing in European football is teams dictate the tempo at home and be aggressive. 
and you know, playing the two, playing Pogba and Herrera, let's say in midfield, allows you to press. Herrera had played his best games this season when he was given that role to be the, the guy that jumps the system that goes out and intercepts. You know, his interception record, his yep. tackle passes completed was second to only Pogba. Had a dominant campaign, player of the season, understandably. But the 4-3-3 with a, a single holder, again, it's that carrot problem. I think you need someone a little bit more mobile. Mm. You need someone that can cover the left, cover, can cover right, that can allow Paul Pogba and Herrera play a little bit higher up the pitch, that will allow United yeah. to create more chances. So you would say the issue with the 4-2-3-1 and the 4-3-3 both rotate around who that holding midfielder is? So crucial, I think. It's so crucial right now, especially dealing with counter-attacks. Mm. You know, we saw against Rail Salt Lake when they broke Carrick couldn't quite keep up with that. You know, obviously, the, yeah. the American side, MLS side, they were very, were very, fast, quick, they were, they very, were very, very quick. quick. But that's where you've got to take in the European game. That you're going to mm. have players of similar pace that need to keep up with the game, that need to protect the back four or the back two, let's say, if we're going to yeah. play with high wing backs. And that's another crucial thing is if you want to play high with your wing backs, your DM needs to be able to move. And unfortunately for Carrick, he will suit some games. I'm not saying he won't suit. Yeah. But it's, it's using Carrick in the right way, not using Carrick every week and having an actual DM in there, whether it is Matic, Fabinho, so so crucial to allow the rest mm. of the system to work and it's i think it's such a pivotal 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 spot for attacking and defensive work yep. i mean it, it was already abundantly obvious to me but looking and actually discussing yep. the formations it becomes even more important that we sign that defensive midfielder but the final formation we're going to look at is a 352 which we actually did i suppose 352 343 whichever way you want to look at it <laughs> man united did use it on a couple of points last season and Mourinho has used it against la galaxy already so maybe this is something he's going to be prepared to use this year. So looking at a 3-5-2, Man United, if we're looking at the squad we've currently got, this probably suits our squad options actually the best because we've got good central centre-back options. We've yeah. got Bai, we've got Lindelof, we've got probably two Anzebi I'll put in there as yeah. well. And we've got good wing-backs in Antonio Valencia, probably one of the best in the league last year. And Matteo and Darmian. Matteo Darmian, <laughs> he's not in the team, but he's actually, he was probably one of the, man of ma one of the men of the match in the Europa League yeah, final. fantastic performance. Luke Shaw. Is, is, Luke Shaw, is, next year is his year. And everyone's thinking about this left wing and the need for someone like Perisic. An overlapping Luke Shaw, we didn't have at any point last year. We didn't mm. have an overlapping left-back. But then when he played, his confidence wasn't quite there. No, it wasn't there, but fingers crossed, man, that he comes back. But I've got him in down here as a wing-back. And then you're looking at a midfield three, you've got Carrick, you've got Herrera, you've got Pogba with Rashford and Lukaku up front. Which Mourinho has said he wants to try at some point. You know, do you think, do you see Man United using a three at the back system much next season? Yeah, I think it suits the amount of centre-backs we have. You know, mm. We've got six so centre-backs that are of pretty decent quality, um, maybe without Marcus Rojo, who's going to come back from injury. Mm. Could go in there, I want to see the development of two in Zabie. You know, fantastic start, played on the yeah, left side of prospect. the back three against Galaxy. But Lindelof is the main guy in there, the ball player, the guy that's going to carry it forward, the guy that's going to get United's attack started. Arguably, you don't need a deep line playmaker if you've got someone like mm. a, a ball playing centre half who can bring the ball out. I think it suits the back three. It allows Mourinho to play three central midfielders in whichever way he wants to do, whether he wants to play one holding two ahead or he wants to switch that around and play Marouane Fellaini as a, you know, a, a target man, what we saw in the Europa yeah. League final to such great effect. Wing backs makes sense. Got a lot of wing yeah. backs. Got a lot um, of wing backs. You know, Fossi Mensa had a fantastic game against LA Galaxy. Positionally needs to work a little bit, but going yeah. forward was brilliant. Uh, yeah. The assist for the Martial goal was cracking. I, I think you could say the same thing about Antonio Valencia, though. When he started at fullback, positioning came only under Mourinho. Yeah. And that's something that Twine's ever... Sorry, Fossi Mensa's really got to learn. But as a natural athlete, he's, yeah, got, he can all, do it. he's got all those All attributes. the attributes. Very, very good going yeah. forward. Um, it's just the defensive sense. It's learning to get back into a back five. Mm -hmm. I think that's a slight thing he needs to do. Midfield, great options. Again, I mentioned the one ahead of the other or, or whatever. Also, if you, you throw in different players in, we spoke about different threes. Mm. What I'd like to see in a 3-5-2 is Ander Herrera holding at the moment if we don't have this holder. Yeah. And then you've got Paul Pogba and Mkhitaryan ahead. Mkhitaryan was fantastic against LA Galaxy in that second half. Brilliant yeah. at carrying the ball. Arguably, the system looks a little bit Monaco-esque in this without even thinking about it. You've got the two central midfielders, you've got the two wing-backs and the two strikers. Yeah. And it gives you great you know, options in that final third. And the, con the concept of Rashford and Lukaku both playing together, that's a... Or even, I think the, the brilliance of that is there's three guys. You've got Lukaku, who deceptively good on the ball, powerful, strong. Marcus mm. Rashford, that's just an own, unknown quality, drifts wherever he wants, you know, will make, a, make something out of nothing. And then, obviously, Anthony Martial's dribbling ability to cut in and shoot. Yeah. It's got great variation. Yeah. And one matter. And Jess Lingard. You, know, you want a playmaker in there, you throw one matter behind one of the guys. 
you want um, Jess Lingard in there, you want a defensive forward. We saw the job that he did against Chelsea with Rashford mm. up top. It wasn't just Marcus Rashford who played well that game, it was Jess Lingard. Yeah, it was again, the, they were both played brilliantly. They both, that was when like, we had two up front and we were just knocking the balls over the top and then yeah. just chasing the Sim- balls. Simple, simple yeah. tactics, but tactics are effective. So I think mm. with the 3 5 2, for me, it makes sense. The problem is that a 3 5 2 to be ultimately effective, you probably need to play that week in, week out. Right. And I think that's the thing that if Mourinho doesn't necessarily do that, it's going to be difficult to do. You know, talking about the Fossu Mensa positioning was an issue against LA Galaxy. They scored one of their goals from him being high up. Yeah. Um, Bay moving over and, and Lindelof not going as well. So it's all about communication in a back three and, mm. and working the, the full backs and so forth. But it would make a lot of sense. But so we've got three formations here, 4-2-3-1, 4-3-3 and a 3-5-2. What do you expect to see the most next season? What do you expect to be Mourinho's staple formation? I think the staple will be the 4-3-3. I think it will play a 4-3-3 more than not. I'd like to see the 3-5-2 as to become the staple. I think that would be quite nice. Again, it suits the players and you think about having two players on the counter-attack, that mm. allows Man United to do that. I think he will play that. I think it's going to be really interesting. And at home, 3-5-2 every single week because we've seen teams come to Old Trafford and sit deep. Why not play a 3-5-2? Because it'll pretty much be a 3-3-4 yeah. with the wing-backs getting forward. So it creates a lot of... Um, problems for the opposition. They've got to deal with a three-man midfield. They've got to deal with two fullbacks going going high. They've also got to deal with two forwards that are going to pull. It opens up a lot of questions. We've seen the three-four-three three work so well because people don't know how to deal with it. Mm. Three-five-two. That's what you got. Simple. Thank you very much, Dave. Excellent. Great three videos we've done here. As I said, make sure you check them all out. The first one is on Ivan Perisic alternatives. The second one is on defensive midfielders, who should Man United be looking at? And the third one here, having a chat about formations. As always, make sure you head straight over and subscribe to Statman Dave's YouTube channel. We'll leave a link in the description. Maybe even get a little end card popping up <laughs> right about here. Look at that technology these days. Thank you very much for coming. Um, looking forward to Man United next season. It's going to be I, exciting. I do think, you know, talking about the formations here we definitely need a defensive midfielder yeah. who would that be make sure you check that video out but until the season starts which is in what not very long at all but can't wait to see it man united next season is going to be very exciting and maybe we're going to play 4-3-3 who knows take it easy everybody